So what this problem is asking us to do is describe this inequality in spherical. <clears throat> okay, we know rho squared is um, x squared plus y squared plus z squared, so we can go through and we can say, we can say rho squared is smaller than or equal to 1. Alright, so where do we go from here? I suppose we could split it in two. <clears throat> Take the square root of both sides. And then we'd see that rho was in between positive 1 and minus 1. But let's not worry about any of the negative numbers. Okay? Why? Because we can arbitrarily assume that um, rho is positive. Why? Because we don't have any restrictions on our um, thetas or our phi's. So equivalently, we can get all of our negative rows with, um, what is that, a pi rotation in any one of my revolutions. So we see that rho is going to be smaller than or equal to 1. Alright, what's rho? Rho is the distance away from the origin. Yeah. So we know rho is going to be between um, 1 and minus 1. So it could be this little one, it could be this big one, it could be that one, it could be this one. The important thing is that rho is <coughs> in between 0 and 1. Yeah, something like this. Yeah, rho's, and it, it can be positive fees, it can be negative fees. And to tell you the truth, I don't really like fees. That's what my bank likes to charge me. It can be long ones, it can be short ones, it can be positive thetas and negative thetas and theta and all of length one and then after you get that some of them even coming out of the board, you're gonna end up with a sphere. Yeah. But what was that? That was an exercise in, um, whoa, these are a little too long. An exercise in row. Rows, you can have any row smaller than one. There's no restrictions on your thetas. There's no restrictions on your fees. So after you let row go wild, yeah, row's gone wild, you're going to end up with a nice sphere. 